the good news is that this example is getting attention across the continent. We see it in free and fair elections from Ghana to Zambia. We hear it in the voices of civil society. I was in Senegal and met with some civil society groups, including a group called YNMAR. which meant fed up that helped to defend the will of the people after elections in Senegal. We recognize it in places like Tanzania, where text messages connect citizens to their representatives. And we strengthen it when organizations stand up for democratic principles, like ECOWAS did in Côte d'Ivoire. But this work is not complete we all know that. Not in those countries where leaders enrich themselves with impunity, not in communities where you can't start a business. Or go to school, or get a house without paying a bribe to somebody. These things have to change. And they have to chance not just because such corruption is immoral. But it's also a matter of self-interest and economics. Governments that respect the rights of their citizens and abide by the rule of law do better. Grow faster, draw more investment than those who don't. That's just a fact. Just look at your neighbor, Zimbabwe. Where the promise of liberation gave way to the corruption of power and then the collapse of the economy. Now, after the leaders of this region led by South Africa brokered an end to what has been a long-running crisis. Zimbabweans have a new constitution, the economy is beginning to recover. So there is an opportunity to move forward but only if there is an election that is free, and fair.
and peaceful, so that Zimbabweans can determine their future without fear of intimidation and retribution. And after elections, there must be respect for the universal rights upon which democracy depends. These are things that America stands for not perfectly but that's what we stand for. And that's what my administration stands for. We don't tell people who their leaders should be. But we do stand up with those who support the principles that lead to a better life. And that's why we're interested in investing not in strong men, but in strong institutions. Independent judiciaries that can enforce the rule of law, honest police forces that can protect the people's interests instead of their own. An open government that can bring transparency and accountability. And, yes, that's why we stand up for civil society for journalists and NGOs. and community organizers and activists who give people a voice. And that's why we support societies that empower women because no country will reach its potential. unless it draws on the talents of our wives and our mothers, and our sisters and our daughters. Just to editorialize here for a second. Because my father's home country of Kenya like much of Africa you see women doing work and not getting respect. I tell you, you can measure how well a country does by how it treats its women. And all across this continent, and all around the world, we've got more work to do on that front. We've got some sisters saying, Amen. Now, I know that there are some in Africa who hear me say these things.
who see America's support for these values and say that's intrusive. Why are you meddling? I know there are those who argue that ideas like Democracy and transparency are somehow Western exports. I disagree. Those in power who make those arguments are usually trying to distract people from their own abuses. Sometimes, they are the same people who behind closed doors are willing to sell out their own. Countries resource to foreign interests, just so long as they get a cut. I'm just telling the truth. Now ultimately, I believe that Africans should make up their own minds about what serves African interests. We trust your judgment, the judgment of ordinary people. We believe that when you control your destiny, if you've got a handle on your governments. Then governments will promote freedom and opportunity, because that will serve you. And it shouldn't just be America that stands up for democracy it should be Africans as well. So here in South Africa, your democratic story has inspired the world. And through the power of your example, and through your position in organizations like SADC and the African Union. You can be a voice for the human progress that you've written into your own constitution. You shouldn't assume that that's unique to South Africa. People have aspirations like that everywhere. And this brings me to the final area where our partnership can Empower people the pursuit and protection of peace in Africa. So long as parts of Africa continue to be ravaged by war and mayhem, opportunity and democracy cannot take root.
Across the continent, there are places where too often fear prevails. From Mali to Mogadishu, senseless terrorism all too often perverts the meaning of Islam. one of the world's great religions and takes the lives of countless innocent Africans. From Congo to Sudan, conflicts fester robbing men, women, and children of the lives that they deserve. In too many countries, the actions of thugs and warlords and drug cartels and human. Traffickers hold back the promise of Africa, enslaving others for their own purposes. America cannot put a stop to these tragedies alone, and you don't expect us to. That's a job for Africans. But we can help. and we will help. I know there's a lot of talk of America's military presence in Africa. But if you look at what we're actually doing, time and again, we're putting muscle behind African efforts. That's what we're doing in the Sahel. Where the nations of West Africa have stepped forward to keep the peace as Mali now begins to rebuild. That's what we're doing in Central Africa. where a coalition of countries is closing the space where the Lord's Resistance Army can operate. That's what we're doing in Somalia, where an African Union force Amisam, is helping a new government to stand on its own two feet. These efforts have to lead to lasting peace, not just words on a paper or promises that fade away. Peace between and within Sudan and South Sudan. So that these governments get on with the work of investing in their deeply impoverished peoples.
peace in the Congo with nations keeping their commitments. So rights are at last claimed by the people of this war-torn country, and women and children no longer live in fear. Peace in Mali, where people will make their voices heard in new elections this summer. In each of these cases, Africa must lead and America will help. And America will make no apology for supporting African efforts to end conflict and stand up for human dignity. And this year marks the 50th anniversary of the OAU. Now the African Union an occasion that is more historic, because the O is taking on these challenges. And I want America to take our engagement not just on security issues, but on environmental issues and economic issues and social issues. Education issues I want to take that engagement to a whole new level. So I'm proud to announce that next year, I'm going to invite heads of state from across Sub-Saharan Africa. To a summit in the United States to help launch a new chapter in U.S. African relations. And as I mentioned yesterday. I'm also going to hold a summit with the next class of our Young African Leaders Initiative. Because we want to engage leaders and tomorrow's leaders in figuring out how we can best work together. So let me close by saying this. Governments matter. Political leadership matters. And I do hope that. Some of you here today decide to follow the path of public service. It can sometimes be thankless, but I believe it can also be a noble life. But we also have to recognize that the choices we make are not limited to the policies and programs of government.
peace and prosperity in Africa, and around the world, also depends on the attitudes of people. Too often, the source of tragedy, the source of conflict involves the choices ordinary people. Make that divide us from one another black from white, Christian from Muslim, tribe from tribe. Africa contains a multitude of identities, but the nations and people of Africa will not fulfill their promise so. Long as some use these identities to justify subjugation and excuse to steal or kill or disenfranchise others. And ultimately, that's the most important lesson that the world learned right here in South Africa. Mandela once wrote, no one is born hating another person because of the color of his skin. or his background, or his religion. People must learn to hate, and if they can learn to hate, they can be taught to love. For love comes more naturally to the human heart than its opposite. I believe that to be true. I believe that's always been true from the dawn of the first man to the youth today. And all that came in between here in Africa kingdoms come and gone, the crucible of slavery and the emergence from colonialism. Senseless war, but also iconic movements for social justice, squandered wealth, but also soaring promise. Madaba's words give us a compass in a sea of change, firm ground amidst swirling currents. We always have the opportunity to choose our better history. We can always understand that most important decision the decision we make when we find our common humanity in one another. That's always available to us, that choice.